In the northeastern wilderness of Minnesota lies the Boundary Waters Canoe Area, a sprawling million-acre expanse of untamed beauty. Carved by ancient glaciers, its network of lakes and streams offers a journey unlike any other in the continental United States. Join us as we embark on a transformative adventure, tracing in the footsteps of travelers of centuries ago. In August of 2023, we set out on our first ever Boundary Waters adventure, an eight-day odyssey navigating 40 miles of raw wilderness. Enduring challenges, marveling at waterfalls, and uncovering ancient pictographs, we found solace and connection amidst the rugged terrain. This is our story, a testament to the enduring allure of the Boundary Waters and the power of nature to unite and inspire. Okay, here we are in the Boundary Waters. We're at the entry point number 23, Mudro Lake. And the plan is to get up into Horse Lake for today. So it's nice and early. It's uh, 612 at the moment. What do you guys think? You excited? Yeah. We're here. So we got a little portage to start off the trip, get down into the water. So without further ado, here we go. Here we are. Just paddling down Mudro Creek, making our way into Mudro Lake. Beautiful morning. Just got started. We had to line the canoe a little bit, a little low and muddy, but it looks like we got deep enough water now. Just gorgeous. I'm so happy to be here. All right, so we came to our first obstacle. We got this like little rock dam here and there's another one down there. So we're gonna do a quick little portage. We could carry over and then paddle for a little bit, but it'll be quicker just to portage past the second one. After that, we should be home free, but here we go. The boys are debating about what some of these sticks look like. Logs? Trunks? Is that what? Well, we made it out of Mudro Creek and we're on Mudro Lake now. Heading to our next portage. Just absolutely beautiful morning. Lake is calm. Light fog on the lake. Beautiful. All right, so here we are on our next portage, a bit of a rocky one, but it's very pretty. Already brought the canoe and all the packs except for the food barrel. So that's what I'm grabbing right now. Doing double portages this trip. I could see these rocks being very slippery if it's wet. This is like a dry creek bed that runs over here. And it makes me wonder if this gets underwater during ice out. I'm sure it does. I'm sure there's fast water here in the early spring with all that ice and snow thawing out. But right now, water levels are pretty low, but we're managing. So far, just seemingly a couple extra carryovers. Had to line a couple spots. No biggie. It is 8.23, so we're cruising along, greatly enjoying ourselves. Here we are to the end, and we'll be off shortly. Canadian Shield rock faces here on the Portage Trail. Really cool, really pretty. We don't get this kind of stuff at home. Just finished with the portage coming into Four Town Lake and definitely had to have our billy goat legs to get down this one. Little turtle just hanging out, just sunbathing on the rock. So about three quarters of the way down Four Town and we're gonna come around this point and make our way to the portages over to Horse Lake. The wind's picking up a little bit, it is hazy from the wildfire smokes in Canada.
if I'm not mistaken, that area over there several years back was a burn area, wildfire. It's grown back pretty well, but you can definitely tell the stark difference. So I missed getting the eagle flying, but you can hear it going to town. It's kind of rare. I've never heard an eagle make that much sound. Maybe he's upset that we're here. <laughs> I don't know. But that was awfully majestic. It just flew right over top of us. I just couldn't get the camera up quick enough. Show you guys what we're dealing with now. We got this friggin' rock garden that we have to carry over. No. Okay, so here we are on Horse Lake. Last stretch of our travel for today. Going to the back corner here to find a campsite. The wind has picked up a bit. But yeah, very pretty lake. It's kind of long. Good stuff. Can't wait to uh, get hydrated, maybe have a bite to eat. What do you guys think? Here we are folks on our island site on Horse Lake. Pretty cool site, but it is a windy day. And then the boys are back behind me doing boy stuff, having the time of their lives. But let me show you real quick around the campsite. Got our canoe set there, we got our gear dump here, extra bags, with the miscellaneous things. Chill in there clothesline, pretty nice fire pit, table for prepping work on both sides, sunbathing, rock here, boys have just been kind of chilling out down here quite, quite a bit of the afternoon, tent set up, but yeah it's uh been a very enjoyable afternoon. All right, so it's about 5:30. We've uh, been doing a lot of relaxing, getting kind of hungry. So for tonight, we decided to do spaghetti. Got it here, vacuum sealed. Get the water going. Dehydrated this myself. So what I like to do is actually put the pasta in a paper bag and that keeps the hard pasta from wanting to kind of poke the vacuum seal bag which in turn could lose the vacuum seal so it's kind of my method of doing it but anyways yeah so we should be eating here in about 20 minutes I'm excited I'm pretty hungry kids say they're hungry too they're out of frame but they're green Good morning, beautiful people. Saturday morning, day two, about 5.30, no, 5.45 in the morning. Sorry about my hair, the wind. Still blowing pretty decent. I got a weather report and it does show the wind to kind of continue how it is now for the rest of the day. And we did do a little bit of fishing from shore last night. Not much luck. I got one little dink bass, maybe, five inches <laughs> so that was fun trying to see what we could catch it was pretty tricky in the wind especially for the kids 
we hung out a lot on this yesterday afternoon. Just kind of soaking in the sun, taking in the views. Cleanses the soul, I tell you. It's so good to be out here. That's only day two. We're out here for eight days total. Loving it. All right, let's get some coffee in. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Good. Yeah? The wind didn't keep you up? It's just revitalizing. Isn't it nice to just sit here and supposed to get pretty hot today. Uh, the weather report read 586, 85, something like that. So that's why I want to get a move on pretty early. 6.30. Do you want oatmeal or no? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, well, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get this water going. All right, so we left the camp. So now we are on the Horse River, headed into Lower Basswood. There's a series of three portages for sure on this river, and then depending on water levels, there could be an additional three. portage second marked or official portage i should say none of the portages are marked in the boundary waters there's no marked campsites or marked portages you gotta be on your toes a little bit so the first one we did was uh an unofficial portage just due to low water had to get around some boulders so you can see got our canoe down there so you come up and around and on that side and that is to get around all of this stuff you can see there's no way to canoe around this <laughs> beautiful landscape though walking along the portage trail here and uh we came across this like <laughs> abundance of whoops of wintergreen berries gonna be eating these wintergreen berries as a nice little trail side snack awesome nature provides and then we just happened to be walking again and came across some uh, blueberries. Now they're really tiny, but they're wild, so they're good. What do you guys think? They're good. You think they're good? Mm -hmm. What do you like better, the wintergreen or the blueberries? Blueberries. blueberries. <laughs> so we're on the next portage here and Garrett spotted a shedded snake skin. <laughs> That's different. Good eye, Garrett. Okay, so we're on the last stretch of the Horse River here, and the Horse River has been challenging every step of the way. It looks like our last challenge here is getting through this wild grass paddy. I don't know if this is wild rice. I'm not too familiar, but it's uh, there to get through. But we're in the home stretch, and then we'll be at Lower Basswood Falls, and then we can find a campsite right after that. And I know we're all looking forward to that. We finally made it out the end of the Horse River through all this thick grass, wild rice, whatever it is. And uh, we can definitely hear Lower Basswood Falls. So right straight in front of us is Canada. And we're going to take the little portage around the falls. So we actually stepped foot on Canadian soil today. Just about made it to our destination. It was a, definitely a grind. What do you guys think? So here we are, Lower Basswood Falls. So powerful. And that's where we just came from.
All right, just sitting here at camp, taking a minute here to soak in the views before we get dinner going. Tonight on the menu is Alfredo. Here, let me show you the view from our campsite. So here we are sitting at camp and just looking at this beautiful view that we have going on here. You can certainly hear the falls. Right across on that side is Canada. And we are, of course, on the U.S. side. So there, on the Canada side, that's part of Quetico. You can see right down here, we have a view of the falls. We got our canoe chilling here. Pretty sweet sight. <laughs> Logs chilling in the tent. What are you taking, a nap or just chilling? Yeah, just relaxing a bit. Got her clothesline hung up. That's about it. Can't get over this view though. It's phenomenal. Good morning, beautiful people. Day three, gorgeous morning. I'm just standing at the base of the falls. You can see back there where the water flows, comes down. And then I can walk and show you over here as well. It's almost like a little mini waterfall too. So it's not just one flow channel, it kind of flows in different spots. Really cool area. Definitely one of the highlights of the trip so far. Another little outlet into this little pool and then it drops off again, kind of meandering through all these rocks. It's all really beautiful. So we fell asleep to the sound of the gushing waterfall. It's a really pleasant sound. All right, good morning. We are cruising along Basswood, headed up to the Pictographs, making our way over to Crooked Lake. Logan and I are trolling on the way in. I hooked up with a decent pike. That was fun. Nice way to start off the day. Got some lovely Canadian shield rock, exposed cliff faces, beautiful rugged landscape. We do have a bit of a headwind that we're battling here. Aside from that, it's a nice day though. Just a little bit more wind than we'd probably like to be dealing with. There they are, do you see them? Right there, the pictographs. Do you want to reel in our lines and get closer? Got a moose, a moose with a calf moose, and I'm assuming a heron or a sandhill crane. Yeah, how'd they get up there? How do they do it? It's crazy. What do you guys think? What's your theory? How did they get up there? Do you think the water used to be that high? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really neat. Another little pictograph right there of people. Wow, what a special place, huh, guys? Are you recording? Yeah. Another pike. Oh, Logue just hooked into something. I'm thinking it's a big pike. So I'm telling him to just take his time. <laughs> Did that jump? Yeah. Maybe it's a bass. I don't know. Did you see it? I didn't see it. Oh, he's down there. Keep tension on it. Keep the line tight. There you go. Okay, now reel it in a little. 
<laughs> bass. Yeah. It's a big bass. So cruising along on Crooked Lake here, we just passed Wednesday Bay not too long ago, making our way into Thursday Bay. Won't be too long and we'll be looking for a campsite where we're going to stay not only today, but tomorrow as a rest day also. The plan is to definitely get some fishing in over the next couple of days here. We've done pretty good today so far. I got two decent sized pike and low got that nice uh bass still continues to just be gorgeous scenery a little bit of an overcast day today the wind's been in a bit of a challenge but it's dying down so that's good not a whole lot further and we can start looking for our campsite we got a couple eyeballed circled on the map that we're gonna try and look for and we'll see how it goes log hooked into something else it seems like another little bass i think <laughs> a little tiny bass, a little dink bass. All right, so we made it to camp. We made it in at about two o'clock. Just set up camp on the way in. We got this nice, perfect eater-sized walleye. So we're gonna have a little shore lunch. But man, what a great day! Oh, well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it's a uh, Monday morning day four and as you can hear and see it's a little bit of a drizzly one it's supposed to clear up here in a couple hours i think at least for a little bit and then we got some rain ahead of us tomorrow it looks like as well the boys are still sleeping they slept in a bit seeing as today's a rest day i casted a few lines from shore a little bit earlier hooked up on one and lost it right at shore that's okay still fun nonetheless of course so i'm just kind of relaxing here taking in the sights it's nice to sit down and relax a bit i'm probably gonna make a coffee here just enjoy the sound and smell of the rain and have a good day and i just uh i'm hoping we can get some more fishing in today because that walleye yesterday was delicious I, I could use more of that that's for sure mm -hmm. Good job, Logan. Oh, that's a big boy.
Dipping in the lower than Yeah, David. No, not that one. I get like the front black piece to go under the water. So you can just scoop them in. Took a evening paddle, or I should say afternoon, did some fishing and caught ourselves some dinner. So it's a walleye fry for dinner tonight. Definitely looking forward to it. We're gonna get these guys cleaned up and get them fried up before dark here. Garrett's still doing some fishing now from the shore. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a good day even, even with the rain, so. Good morning everyone. So we left our campsite on Crooked Lake. It's day five. We're paddling last stretch of Crooked Lake here down to our exit on Friday Bay to our first portage. As Garrett, or sorry, Logue, you said it this morning. Back to the grind. <laughs> but the wind subsided, which is nice because crossing this bay in the wind would not have been fun. Interesting island here. One lonely little tree. We'll call it Lonely Island. Okay, so we made it to the end of Friday Bay of Crooked Lake, and we're on our first portage here into Papoose Creek. I think I'm saying that correctly. I think it shows it being approximately 127 rods. So not bad at all. The boys already took off with one load. I'm gonna grab the food barrel and the thwart bag, and then I'll head back for the uh, portage pack and canoe. All right, so we just finished that portage, and I gotta say, this is one of the nicest landings I've ever had the pleasure of finding myself on. It's like our own little lawn here. Usually, you know, we're fighting rocks and stumps and roots and all sort of stuff. The bugs are kind of bad, but, um, and I was mistaken. I thought it was 129 rods. It was like 140, so a little, a little bit longer. So it's about a half a mile, but it wasn't bad at all. We did find some wild edibles on the Portage Trail, so that was kind of fun. We came across some raspberries, and then I had the boys try some wild rose hips. Um, they were actually like perfect ripeness so that was cool so we're hearing some whistling Let's see if it does it i'm not familiar with the sound oh i think it's an eagle guys oh. okay mystery solved there's been so many eagles around it's wild so now we're gonna get on to papoos creek here and head that way so we're hoping maybe if we be quiet through here, through this creek, there might be a good opportunity to see a moose. It might be too late in the day, but we'll see. Here we are just taking a leisurely paddle down Papoos Creek and 
to Wagash Lake, where the plan is to stay for tonight. All right, so we got a camp all set up here on Wagash Lake. Probably not our favorite campsite. I don't know, what do you guys, you agree? Yeah. Yeah, but nonetheless, we got here fairly early, so it's cool. We got camp all set up. Um, it is supposed to rain tonight, so we set up the tarp. And right now, we are on a mission to go find some standing dead wood. We got a little bit of firewood already, but we feel like we could use some more. And while we're on the mission, I poured myself a glass of whiskey. So we're just uh, kind of relaxing by the lake, around the fire pit in this kind of misty, dreary day. We got the whole lake to ourselves. There's only one campsite on the entire lake. So that's pretty cool. All right, so Taco Mac is done. Serve it up, rehydrated for about 20 minutes. So we finished the taco mac, and usually I'm terrified of having too much food. Nothing is worse than that in the backcountry because you either have to force yourself to eat it or put it in with your garbage, pack it out, which is no fun because yeah. then it's wet by that time. So what I remembered is that we had some leftover naans. So what we're doing is uh, toasting those up as a little snack to uh, kind of augment our dinner. Basically, we turn it into garlic bread naan. It's real simple, but man, is it delicious, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of hits good, doesn't it? And then, in the meantime, while this is toasting up, we're discussing animated movies. <laughs> Such as Shrek and what was the other one we just talked about? Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. Yeah, yeah. Good movies. What you guys doing? Yeah, in the mist. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your favorite parts of the trip so far. Okay. Favorite parts probably catching a pike. Favorite part is fish, by far. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Eating it or catching it? Both. Yeah. yeah both. And then. What was your most memorable fish memory so far? Oh, my smallmouth. Probably the first really pike oh, I the caught. big smallmouth yeah, for Logue. Small okay, mouth. that makes sense. The first pike I caught off the shore. Yep. That was your first pike, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I feel like you weren't expecting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Logue? Nothing. Camping. Camping? <laughs> Got the fire going. Garrett, how you doing? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. How many marshmallows did you guys have? Each. Um, I can keep counting. Let's not tell the camera that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's us. You know what? What's funny is for this being one of the, what I would rate worst sites, mm -hmm. it's been one of the best nights it's so like far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny. So you know what? That Everyone, that just goes to prove it is what you make it, right? Yep, definitely. And here's a view from our campsite onto Wagash Lake. Fairly small lake. We feel pretty alone. Feels very wild. Good morning, everyone. So we uh, just paddled across Wagash Lake and into the portage into, I believe it's Ferry Lake. The longest portage of the trip at 300 rods, so about a mile. So yeah, here we are getting started. The boys are determined to do a single carry. Just saving themselves a trip is all. Either way, I'll have to double portage. 
All right, well, we made it to the end of uh, the longest portage of the trip. I think, I don't know, to me, it seemed a little bit longer than what it said on the map and maybe not as flat as I would have liked. There were some uh, uphill climbs, not terrible, but definitely gave us a workout for today. The boys did good doing the single carry, so they were able to get it all in one. And then we got two short portages and then we'll be to our destination lake, Boot Lake. So yeah, just sitting here taking a quick rest and then we'll be on our way. So we are on Ferry Lake and then heading our way into the last portage of the day. Lots of character on this little lake. So we just got a short little paddle and then a tiny little 15 rod portage and then we'll be to our destination. We are on Boot Lake. It's amazing how calm it is, but we're headed to check out this first campsite up here and maybe call that home for the next two days. Gorgeous lake though. Can't get over how calm it is. Definitely different than the uh, yesterday. Yesterday was a bit windy and challenging. All right, so we made it to our destination a few hours ago. We've been, uh, you know, setting up camp. We all went for a swim, which felt great. Kind of washed the stink off of us and uh, refresh ourselves. But yeah, we're all set up. It's starting to rain. Fire pit. Got our tarp set up to stay out of the rain. So we got the tent set up back here. We just rehydrated a dinner, which was a beef broccoli stir fry which was good so we got food in our bellies i also had a hot tea which was nice but the plan is to have a fire but if not we'll just uh hunker down under the tarp and play some games Good morning everyone. It's uh, Thursday, so day seven, our last night here. We just had something to eat. I went out fishing this morning, caught a bass. It is a lot warmer today. It's nice, so I feel like um, probably due to have one more swim too before we head out. But yeah, we're just um, sitting here, relaxing, taking it all in and We'll make the best of it tonight. We'll definitely have a fire, do hot cocoa, s'mores, maybe even make some popcorn, do it all. <laughs> do it big. It's calm, so that's nice. We've seen all kinds of wildlife by our site between rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks. Keep seeing bass roll out, jump in front of us here. Here, I don't know if the camera can see it. Got fish. Let me see. <laughs> you got a crayfish too. I did? Somehow. You must have been eating him. There he is. Small but good so. Good job, Garrett. Ooh. Yeah. You guys wanna keep him? Yeah. yeah. Knew that spot would have it. How did you catch this big guy? Well, I just casted it out by the seaweed. <laughs> and caught him. So first, I caught this perch, and he was a uh, gilled. Didn't seem like he was gonna make it, so figured we had to bring him home. And then Garrett caught this big bass. Not the greatest table fare, of course. We'd rather have walleye, but. Since we had the perch anyways, we're like, well, we'll keep the bass and bacon meal out of it. So here we are. It's about three o'clock and we're going to have a little fish fry in the sun coming out. So nice day. Good last day, right? Mm -hmm. 
frying up the fish here just about done so again we got a piece of perch and the bass and this is my homemade fish crisp basically 50 percent flour and cornmeal and then i put lemon pepper old bay and some dill it's really good and i think we're all ready All right, it's about four o'clock and it's gotten pretty warm. We finished our shore lunch, cleaned up, and now it's time to take a dip. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, do it. Last night in the Boundary Waters. It's very sad, but it's a very nice night. It turned out to be a beautiful day. And if we get lucky, the sky will stay clear and we'll be able to see the stars tonight. Right now we've got a clear sky with the moon over top of the lake. And you can see it shimmering on the lake there. So, boys. Yeah? Tell me what you think about the Boundary Waters. So we did portaging, did canoeing, we did camping, fishing, fishing uh, cooking. Eating, I don't know, a lot more, but it was really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Would you do it again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Morning everyone. Eighth and final day in the Boundary Waters. We actually have to head out today. Rain came in, oh I don't know, I think around 2 a.m. and rained all the way until probably about 6 a.m. Rained pretty hard there for a little bit. It's kind of cleared up now and turned into a pretty gorgeous morning. Came out of the tent pretty well as soon as it stopped raining. You can see behind me we had pretty much everything under the tarp. So everything would stay dry, try to minimize the stuff we have to pack away wet. Yeah, it's uh, sad to be leaving. Eight days was a great trip, the longest trip so far. Still not enough. The lake isn't too choppy right now. It's pretty calm, so it should be easy paddling today. The way I see it, I think we got about a, oh, I don't know, four hour paddle or so. 
Okay, so here we are just leaving Boot Lake on the Portage Trail to Fortown. It's a pretty short little portage here. Something like 50 rods. Fairly flat. Nice easy one to start off the day. I believe we have a total of four or five portages today. All relatively short. So I'm just going to kind of take our time. We're scheduled to be picked up by our outfitter access point, which is the same place that we entered at. So we did a complete loop. It's a bit windy. It's gotten more windy than it was this morning, but the sun's out, so that's nice. We had a lot of overcast days on the, uh, call it the last few days. It's been kind of overcast, except yesterday was really nice. And then that rain came through this morning. We've come across a lot of wild edible vegetation on this trip between blueberries, raspberries, rose hips, wintergreen, bunch berries. And then as far as fish goes, we did really good fishing on Crooked Lake. Boot Lake, not so much. We hit some bass. Supposedly, there are walleye on Boot Lake, but man, I could not find them. So I don't know if there's just not a lot in there as far as population, or maybe, which is quite possible. I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We are about to the end here into Four Town Lake. So we're coming to the end of Four Town here into the series of portages back into Mudrow Lake. Definitely feeling the the trip coming to an end here. We were just reflecting on the challenges of the first two days and saying how it was totally worth it. It's been an amazing trip. The weather's turned a bit. It looks like it could be raining. The wind, the last half of coming down Four Town Lake was a bit of a challenge. But here before too long, we'll be on the next portage. We got four more left. We got a short 24 rod, 115, and then what? What do we got next? That was 24, and the last one's 27. Okay. But we think the last one is probably about triple the length of that because of low water. That's walking back to the actual entry point. It was definitely longer than that when we first entered. But 